As most of us know, there are a lot of issues in the community of SSO, bullying being a perfect example, toxic positivity being another. But a larger issue, and one that very few people seem to talk about, is plagiarism. The reason for this is that very few people are actually willing to step up and say anything. And this just creates an environment ripe for more plagiarism. This is a video I've been meaning to make, especially after a person literally stole my entire script to use in her own videos. Since then, they have deleted their videos, but the fact remains, they plagiarized work and I must bring attention to it, which a lot of people don't seem to agree with. It's punching down, they say, you're being mean, you're sending hate their way, which I find to be all utter nonsense. The size of their audience is irrelevant, as the issue is not the size of their YouTube channel, but the action they took to grow that channel, stealing your work. And although I don't like the idea of sending hate to small creators, they kind of brought it on themselves. It's a hard truth that these kids do not understand, but this is directly coupled to the overly positive nature of this community. The sickness in SSO of being overly positive and kind has put a metaphorical clamp on the mouths of people who are victims in this situation. They are hurt and some are completely ruined by the blatant stealing of their work. It's not something to be taken lightly, which is why myself and Eleanor Nightwalker will be discussing it today. We will be covering two situations, Star Stable Adventures and Spellcaster. In the case of Star Stable Adventures, Eleanor would like to make it very clear that this is all alleged, but it is a subject that she has been meaning to talk about. Hopefully, by opening the door so tentatively between myself and her, we can start the process of giving more creators the courage to step forward and politely call out situations where how hard work was so badly abused. Because honestly, the SSO roleplay community is rampant with copying and plagiarism. But that will be left for a second video. The structure of this video will be put into two parts. The first will cover plagiarism, its effects, why people do it, and why people won't speak up. The second will cover both Eleanor and my own stories. I'll leave timestamps in the description below. But before we do get into that, I would just like to thank all of my coffee supporters for being more awesome than Don Blutz Dragon Slayer finally getting a release. Let's get into it. Let's first establish what is plagiarism. Plagiarism, for those who might not know or who are perhaps unclear, is the practice of taking someone else's work and passing it off as their own. It quite literally comes from the Greek word kidnapper, which I found rather funny. But the key part here is using something without giving credit and not making it clear exactly where you got your ideas or your work from. For example, I used Fafa Gaming's work in one of my videos. I gave full credit, but I did not ask permission, for which I was rightfully raked over the coals for. Although I did get credit, asking is another step in the process we as content creators often forget, myself included. However, the main thrust of the argument is that plagiarism is the stealing or taking of ideas or work and pretending it was your own for the minor glory that comes from doing that. But what is the effect of having your work stolen? Stolen. The effect of having your content stolen really depends on a couple of things, like for example, what kind of theft is it and who is doing it. For example, if you are a big content creator who gets your work stolen by an unknown content creator, there may not be that much of an effect, other than of course being annoyed with them and feeling discredited. However, if it's the other way around and you are the small creator who gets your work stolen by a big creator, in that case, they will be the ones receiving all the credit and not you, and you will be completely discredited because they're more famous than you. A lot of people don't really have a platform to share their ideas in the first place, and then for someone to overhear their ideas, run off with them and claim them as their own, that would make it impossible for the audience to trace it back to the original creator. In which case, all the work and effort you put into it will have gone completely to waste, because nobody will know that you're the one who came up with it first. There's also something about the thought that someone else is profiting off of your content. Some people may view content creation as some sort of shortcut to money, which as a hobby YouTuber, it's absolutely not. But to make money off of content creation, they have to get views. And to get views, they have to produce consistent content that an audience is actually interested in. Not everyone is prepared to put in the work, but they still want the money. So what they do is they exploit your work to get those views, to generate that money. And what do you get in return? The literal opposite. Because if people watch their video on a certain topic, then they are much less likely to watch your video on it. And if they beat you to it and they upload the video first, well, then you simply can't post the video. Because if you do, you'll get framed for content theft. For your own idea. 
So why do people do this? Why do people copy each other's work? I think there are many things that could go through a person's mind to lead them to steal content or ideas. Maybe they've been watching a video and they agree so much with what's being said and how they're saying it that they decide they want to use those exact words in a video of their own. Maybe they've seen a video that's receiving a lot of attention and views and so they want to make a video just like it in order to hopefully get the same amount of attention and views. Or maybe someone just wants to be the first to post about a certain topic in order to gain a lot of views. And that desire leads them to steal ideas from other people. I think that in the shortest of terms, what content theft comes down to is people being unable to word themselves as well as they want to or come up with the ideas that they want, while at the same time being a slave to the view count. Why are people so reluctant to talk up about plagiarism? I had a chance to speak to a couple of people in the roleplay community and they explained it to me like this. There is an expected politeness in the Star Stable community. As a result, most people who call out plagiarism do so in the kindest way possible. Saying things like, hey, I noticed this video is pretty similar, I just don't like it when people copy my work, would you please do not do that again, thanks. At this point, one of three things will happen. One, they will ignore you, like what happened to me. Two, they will outright deny everything, rare, but it does happen. Three, they will say they are sorry and they had no idea they were copying you. That is the more favorite one of the three. Because what this does is it instantly makes you the bad guy. You are seeing things that aren't there. It's like an odd form of gaslighting, where you're manipulating someone into questioning their own reasoning. Now, the other option that you have is to be a bit more straightforward and just say something along the lines of, your video X is an almost direct copy of my video Y. Don't copy work, it's not cool. If you are not being polite, then they will most likely respond by dragging your message out into the open and calling you a monster. And most people will agree with you because that politeness in the Star Stable community is so rampant. This is why no one really calls out plagiarism and why myself and Eleanor are taking the plunge with this video. Hopefully it will make more people more willing to talk about plagiarism in their own communities and actually directly start calling these people out. In case you can't tell, I really don't like plagiarists. But now we can start with our experiences, and we're going to start with mine. Now my own story of plagiarism is pretty recent, quite brief and damned obvious. Again, do not send any hate to any of these people, she did private all her videos, eventually. I absolutely believe in the idea of people turning over a new leaf. Equitopia did it, so please do not attack them. Now on the 3rd of July 2023, I posted a video of the character update where I listed four specific things I felt SSO could have done better. A person contacted me shortly thereafter leaving this comment on my video. I just want to inform you a video that was uploaded today by the YouTuber Spellcaster is incredibly similar to this video of yours. And with that, I mean even the wording is incredibly similar. I wanted to reply, but the comment was almost immediately deleted. However, I remembered the name and headed off to Spellcaster's page to see what this was about. I spotted a video that seemed to be about the characters in general. I watched it and I felt it was similar to a lot of videos, but not only mine. So I left a nice comment praising the video and told them they earned a sub. However, then I watched their newest video and I'm going to let you listen to this. On June 20th, Star Sable Online finally released the long-awaited character update. This game update aimed to replace the old character models with new ones that offered more diversity, variety, and expressions. On the 20th of June, Star Stable Online, the very large horse MMO, finally launched the update for the characters. This update would delete all of our old characters and then replace them with the brand new models, which now offers diversity, variety, and expressions. However, the issues with this update primarily revolve around how it was handled rather than the actual models themselves. Whether players love or hate the new models is subjective, as it depends on personal taste and attachment to the previous avatar. However, the problems with this update really have very little to do with the actual models. Whether you love or hate the models is really a moot point, as it comes down to a subjective taste, the value you place on the old model and if you were ready for a change. The main problem lies in the handling of this update, which was poorly executed as evidenced by four major issues. The lack of slender body types, poor timing, the general state of the update, and issues in the chat. But the real problem is rather how the update was handled, and it wasn't handled well, as proven by these four issues. A missing body option, the poor timing, the absolute state of the update, 
and the chat. It is fine, beyond fine, to take inspiration from videos. We take inspiration consistently from each other, and that's good. It means the community continues to grow and build on itself. But that is really all it should be. Inspiration. You need to take the idea and turn it into something that is unique to you. Otherwise, it just becomes a bad copy. Now, after I saw this video, I was pretty ticked off. I left a comment on this video addressing the situation, and thankfully, they did remove the video almost immediately. However, shortly thereafter, they replied to my original comment on their previous video, and they said the following. Wow, thank you so much. That means so, so much. Your videos are fantastic. You're so well-spoken. It's an honor. The whole situation felt a little bizarre, I'm not going to lie. Here was a person who clearly had outright grabbed material from another YouTuber, claimed it as their own, got called out by said YouTuber, and now pretended nothing had happened. Miffed is a considerable understatement by this point. Later, it would turn out that she also copied Amelia Dreambell. Amelia told me someone else had let her know that this person had outright copied her jokes and also one of her newer videos, and here is the footage for that. I should not feel more welcome and accepted on a first-person shooter game than I do a horse game engineered towards young people, young girls. And I feel more welcome in the in the Call of du Call of Duty. I feel more welcome and more safe and more accepted in the Call of Duty community then I do a children's horse game. I've seen comments like, why aren't there any normal faces? Excuse me? There, There is no such thing as normal at all. I've seen so many comments of people like, can you please just add a normal face type? Bro, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by add a normal face? There is no such thing as a normal face. Nah, don't worry, I'm a red-blooded American. <sighs> Ain't nothing like hard work and labor to get in the true American mindset. That is horse crap. And this is a pile of horse crap. Hear me out. Guys, Lisa's dad kind of creeps me out. I don't like her dad, he creeps me out. There's so many exclamation marks. Guys, guys, chill out. And That's too many exclamation points at once. I can't deal with that. What is going on? You told me to do it! That bull will not think twice about ramming you. You gotta be careful. Do you understand what people make us do in this game? You told me to do it! That bull will not think twice about ramming you in your horse. You gotta be careful around it. You told me to do it! Are we gonna have to, like, collect horse poop for this? Cause I don't like that. Do I have to collect horse crap to make this? This is like Minecraft. We are literally playing Minecraft right now. Isn't that just amazing? I'm going to sign off the section by saying this. We as a community are far too lenient on plagiarists. It is clearly a much larger issue than we can imagine. Although we should never just call someone out, it is also not a good idea to leave it, because that just gives them license to continue. But with that out of the way, let's get into Eleanor's story. Luckily, I don't have a lot of personal experience with content theft, but when Rustle contacted me about this topic, there was one person who popped into my mind, someone you may have heard of, and that is Star Stable Adventures. Now, I want to start off by saying that what I'm about to tell you is all alleged. I don't have handheld proof that this is theft, and I want Star Stable Adventures to have a chance to actually respond to what I'm about to tell. But anyway, this is my side of the story. So I have a Discord server and one of the things that I really love doing in there is to discuss theory and find evidence with my fellow server members. One of the theories that I've discussed on there, which I was very eager about at the time, is from 2021 and it's about the Hermit. Following a long line of evidence, I was sure that I had figured out who he was why he became a hermit and how he connects to various quest lines. But I was missing some crucial footage from the Christmas quest and I had to wait till December to actually see this return. This particular quest made a return on December 22nd, 2021 and the very next day Star Stable Adventures had uploaded video called Theory Time, who is the hermit. The evidence in that video was practically identical to what was discussed in the server and so that made my theory project worthless. I had to throw it in the trash. It was also weird to me because this channel usually did glitching and spoiler content and not theories. However, since the Christmas quest had just come out again, I concluded that they must have read it and actually realized the same thing that I had. So at this point, I had no plans on pointing fingers. But then it happened again. After the first incident, I had started getting into the Springdale games, which is linked to the same developers as Starshine Legacy, Star Academy, and Star Stable The Seasoned Riders. 
The games have nothing to do with Yorick or SSO, but I was very interested in seeing other games developed by the same company, and so we ended up having a lot of good discussions and treasure hunts in the Discord server about these particular games. And what do you know? Sometime later, Star Stable Adventures uploaded a video showcasing the Springdale games. This time I felt convinced that they were taking ideas from the Discord server, because again, Springdale has nothing to do with Yorick or SSO, so why in the world would another SSO content creator suddenly decide to start talking about it? There is also another incident that happened in my server which doesn't really concern me directly, however, it does kind of add to the two incidents that I've already mentioned. So I woke up one day and two of the server members were outraged, saying that Star Stable Adventures were in the server and they had used their idea for a video. Now, in this case, permission had been given, however, they were not pleased with the credit. I read this situation as more of a personal disagreement that got blown out of proportions, but the drama peaked with Star Stable Adventures leaving the server and both parties uploading videos trashing each other, which were later taken down. The whole server was left in a sour state after this whole thing, and a lot of people were concerned that Star Stable Adventures were still lurking in the server through an alternate account. And as a result, many suddenly became wary of sharing their IDs on there, and even deleting them after sending them sometimes. Personally, what these experiences have taught me is that I can't share or discuss ideas or theories openly, because if I do, there is a chance that someone may take them and run off with them and claim them as their own. And this is really a shame, because discussing theories and lore is the whole reason why I started making content in the first place, and now I can't do that without a fear of getting ripped off. All in all, I find this whole situation sketchy at best, and I have yet to hear a response about it. Star Stable Adventures has their DMs closed, and my comment on their video got deleted within an hour of posting it. So getting in touch with Star Stable Adventures to actually ask about this incident is easier said than done. I don't know if anyone else has similar experiences with them, but I, for one, cannot watch the videos anymore without questioning where they got it from. Now, Eleanor's story does showcase quite clearly how damaging the stealing of ideas can be. Her Discord is now a space of caution instead of sharing of ideas, which is a tragedy, as such a space should have been celebrated. Although many might pipe pipe at this point and say, oh, but she shouldn't have shared her ideas online to begin with. She was asking for it. But you forget the purpose of her Discord. It was supposed to be a space where theories could be discussed and where her ideas could be shared with her fans. That entire idea has been ruined by one selfish act by one person. In closing, stealing hard work directly is damaging to creators. It ruins morale, ruins your wish to create, and it can kill entire channels. They get away with it because we remain silent. The responses are often a mixture of either denial, angry retribution, or tears. As a result, you will always feel like the bad guy. For which I say, fine. If I have to be the bad guy in order to bring attention to this, then I will gladly accept the label. Because no matter how you swing it, if you steal work, or even steal entire ideas from a forum, then you are in the wrong. And a judge would very much agree with me.